Hello everyone, and as always, I thank you for coming to my talk show, Tell It Like It Is. I'm your host, Morris Man, and my co-host, Joseph Spencer. And today we're going to have a, a fun topic, a topic that everybody can relate to at some point in their life, and that topic is music. And let me just say this before I turn it over to Joe. Music has always been a very important part of my life. I can recall when I was growing up, there was always music in the house. There was a piano, my mom used to sing, my dad used to sing. I have a brother who sings and looks like Smokey Robinson. It was just, you know, we were a happy clan when it came to our music. And I picked up guitar. I learned how to write songs, arrange, engineer, uh, produce. And music is something that basically takes you throughout your entire life as far as an enjoyment. You might have a moment in your life where you kind of stop. And I did that. I had a moment in my life that I had to kind of had to stop, kind of reflect on my life. But uh, later on, I picked up my guitar from up under my bed, dusted it off, and got back to playing. So, Joe, what are your thoughts on music, and what do you think? Well, my history in music, uh, there was certain music in the household that was con considered the devil's music. Okay. And uh, some music you had to go off and sneak and listen to. But I started getting, my music thing is pretty eclectic. I started getting to jazz when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, like you said, you're a musician. I'm not. I do sing a little bit. Well, you right. still, like you said. Well, you're still considered a musician. Okay. Well, now I don't read, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't for a while, neither. I mean, funny you mention that uh, the first 10 years of my life, I didn't know how to read music. And you can. Mm -mm. And one day, it's like uh, things happen for a reason. One day, I went to a jazz club with a friend of mine, and there was a guitar player by the name of Phil Seas from Chicago. Hello, Phil. And... He was actually didn't supposed to be there that day. He was sitting in because their their original guitar player in that band he was somewhere else doing a gig. Mm -hmm. So Phil sat in with these guys and he just blew me away. And I knew at that point, in order to get to that level of playing like Phil, which I think I'm not there yet, but I'm close, that I had to learn how to read music because mm -hmm. your ear can only take you so far, mm -hmm. you know. And when I after seeing Phil that day, I signed up again diligently to learn how to mu mm -hmm. read music because I went through the traditional way of learning how to play, you know, play, but the way that they, they taught you back in that era, they deliberately tried to kind of keep you for two years, mm -hmm. you know, when you're supposed to read these uh, songs out of the book that you would never learn or really never go out and learn to play, or should I say play, because I don't think there's a big demand for Mary had a little lamb, no. you know, <laughs> but the reason it supposedly it was, how you play it. <laughs> true, you know, I'm playing in front of a bunch of kindergartens, yeah. <laughs> but the, the reason for that was in order to play what you want to play off the radio, you got to learn this. That's absolutely false. You know, I found that out a couple of years ago. So uh, after going to uh, these classes, uh, I kind of dropped out. Phil researched my desire to learn how to read and then right after that performance, the next day I got on the phone, I started calling places. I met a guy by the name of, uh, what is his name? Michigan Avenue. But anyway, I'm sorry that I forgot his name. But I learned how to read through this guy. He taught me in less than one lesson to, to, to how to cut to the chase and learn how to read. So I went back the next week to, to see Phil play again and the other guy came back, the, 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 the original member of guitar player. He was awful. So it's like things happen for a reason because if I would have went the second time and seen the awful guy, I would have never really had that desire or urge to say, I need to go back and learn how to read mm -hmm. when I seen Phil C play. You know, so, uh, you know, it's just interesting that things happen for a reason and Phil was there that day that I came to see this band play and he just blew me away. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's when I decided to learn and try to stick to learn how to read music. And once I did, it's like the door, the door just, I just kicked the yeah. door wide open. Yeah. I started to buy sheet music and play everything like the record, you mm -hmm. know, chords that I couldn't figure out because of the way that the song was structured. I couldn't hear it in the mix. Because if I can hear it, I mean, if you, you can, can isolate it. the guitar part, so any other part, you might can be able to pull yeah. it off from A to Z. But sometimes, depending on the arrangement, you can't hear it, you know? So, yeah, well. it's it's good to know. Good uh, to not know. reading music, uh, I, I was busted out on a lot of studio jobs, like commercials and stuff. Yeah, but and I that's was, yeah, and that's when you really need to you know really how to read, read because music. it's easy if you got a pretty good ear to play in a band because you can hear the songs off the radio and you try to emulate it. But like you said, mm -hmm. when you have those kind of gigs, you know you don't know what they want from mm -hmm. you, and then when you sit down, they give you the sheet music, mm -hmm. say play. 
So I, I thought I was safe because I, I said, once I hear the piano and, and the you know the bass and the lead guitar, I could just take it from there because I, I I used to have a pretty good ear, you know, like I I hear a few piece of music and I sing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like being able to see the notes on a piano or a guitar. You just sing it. Mm -hmm. You know, but in the studio, the, uh, uh, the the bass player might play by himself and. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. And a guitar player may play by the, you know, and then you come in and put the vocals in. You, but you got then you got to have that sheet music in front of you. Yeah, I mean and it's 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 good to be able to. I'm glad I learned in the sequence that I did because yeah. I first tried to do it the traditional way, classes, trying to read music, and then I abandoned it and just started to rely on my ear, and my ear became very good. Mm -hmm. But again, you can only take your ear so far. Mm -hmm. And then I'm glad that later on I grasped the concept of theory because mm -hmm. if I would have learned theory first and didn't develop my ear, I don't think that I mm -hmm. would be the musician that I am today. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of musicians that traditionally went that route of let me read first. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you don't rely on your ear and you don't develop your mm -hmm. ear. Because since I couldn't read at that point, I had to develop my ear. I had nothing else to fall back on. Yeah, but like you said, uh, uh, you. You had people in your family with musical talent, so it, it yeah. was an inherited thing. My brother and I were the only ones in our family could sing, mm -hmm. you know, and both was were, were artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I I'm a sculptor, and uh, uh, did do drawings and stuff. And he 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 did a lot of drawings. I don't know if he could sculpt, because we parted earlier mm -hmm. in life. But he could sing. He could uh, you know you he hear it and he could sing it. Yeah. You know, just like my oldest brother again. Yeah. He, Sings like Smokey Robinson and looks like Smokey Robinson, and the yeah. women love him. You know, I bet they do. Yeah, I mean, that's one talent musically that I wish that I had because I do sing a little bit as far as harmonies. Let's hear. Back in yeah, right, <laughs> <laughs> you run anybody out of the studio? Look at Tom frowning. <laughs> but uh, I I do background because I have an ear for that and mm -hmm. arrangements. But you know, I wish that I could really sing well because. Mm -hmm. As you know, the singer is always the the, the vocal they point of the, the band. Front pieces. He's the front you piece. You guys are the one to put everything together. Yeah, with the backdrop. And actually, I, I like being in the background. Yeah. I mean, every now and then, every blue moon, I would mind being up in the front for a moment to be featured. Yeah. But I'm comfortable with my position within the band. You know, it's mm -hmm. still of I'm the guy with the mic in my face. You know, don't want to mm -hmm. be that guy because there's a lot of price pressure on that guy. Yeah. Because everybody focuses on that guy. Not us. Yeah, you, know? you, you got to be charming and be talented and be yeah. cute and all and that crap. And when yeah. you mess up, everybody knows because yeah. they're looking at you. When we in the background, we might hit a no wrong note or two. Nobody knows it, providing right. that we keep playing and not looking, you know, suspicious or suspect. You know, you know? And, and nobody go turn around and say, "Well, he wrote that shitty piece." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go and, do that and, <laughs> exactly. You know, because uh, here is something interesting. Yeah. Uh, when I was a teenager, my c baseball coach said he went to go see. Uh, the staple singers. Okay. Papa Staples and the staple yeah. singers. And he said, uh, the lead singer, I forgot her name. She's done some stuff with Prince I lately. Can't her name. And uh, she Mom was singing and <laughs> <laughs> she was singing. She had low cut, you know, sequence mm. dressed on and she was bending down and one of her breasts fell out. And still a terrified and run off the stage, she put that breast back in and kept singing. Yeah. You know? And when you do that, it takes the attention off of what just happened. Yeah. Because People react based on your reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, she could have freaked out like, "Oh my goodness!" and like ran off the stage. Jackson. Yeah, well, that was staged. You know, yeah, nowadays these people, it's like, let's put this in, and it, it happened, but it was an it was an accident. Yeah, right. You know, but who would you say is your all time favorite artist or band? Uh, uh Jimi Hendrix. Okay. And Jazz. Why? What puts Jimmy on the top? What put Jimmy on the top is because he was totally original. And he took back the black people's sp place in rock and roll. He let people know that rock and roll is black music. Mm -hmm. Not Ev Elvis Presley or whoever these little white boys was. I'm not president. Right. But, but uh, uh, he let people know that that's where rock started with mm -hmm. black, black people. Yeah. Well, and I was once told, and it makes sense to me, in order to be successful, regardless of what industry you're in, you got to be either one of these three things. First, best or different. Right. Jimmy was first. He was first and he, and was, he different. was different. Yeah, he was different. And he wasn't afraid to say, hey, I'm about to do something that it's not expected of a black man to do. Mm -hmm. And he did it, and he did it extremely well. You know, Jimmy was an unbelievable talent. Right. 
a lot of people, you know, the younger generation, and uh, this is nothing bad against Prince. I mean, we all do this as musicians. We observe. And when we observe someone, we become excited about doing what they do, right. and we emulate it. And Prince is a combination of Little Richard, Little Richard yeah. Jimi Hendrix, and yeah. uh, the guitar players from uh, James Brown, JB's, you know? Well, well, well uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 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 Jimi Hendrix played with James Brown. Yeah, Jimmy Hendrix played with James Brown. He played with uh, the Ice Brothers. Mm -hmm. He played with uh, he played with BB King. Mm -hmm. He played with a couple of other people before he decided to do he his become thing. Become Jimmy Hendrix, right? Become Jimmy Hendrix, and uh, he did well. I mean, Jimmy had an ability to to just switch over. You know, he started from you know R and B rock and roll mm -hmm. roots. Then he said he wanted to do the hardcore acid rock, mm -hmm. you know, psychedelic thing. You know, and uh, I like to listen to. You know, because when you think of Jimmy, of course you think of the screaming guitar solos and mm -hmm. the feedback, but he was a pretty good gu acoustic guitar player. He was, a, uh, he was a wonderful classical guitar player. I had the pleasure of listening to him in 1965 in a little club on Cedric. Jimi Hendrix and uh, uh, Bob Dylan. Yeah. And Jimi Hendrix busted out the, 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 the uh, uh, acoustic guitar. He, he was a musician. He was a musician's musician. And what's interesting about Jimi Hendrix is he couldn't read music. He, he couldn't? Couldn't, re couldn't read a note of music. Yeah, couldn't read a note. And I find that to be extraordinary as that a guitar player. It is. Because... To listen to a piece and then play it. Yeah. Note for note. Yeah, because I'm more or less a rhythm guitar player. Mm -hmm. I, I do my lead solos when it's asked of me in the band, but I'm more or less a rhythm guitar player. But Jimmy, of course, was more a heavy. He was a good combination of both. But of course, his solo is what took him to the stratosphere. Oh man, it's and, and was he heard live. Not the, I've heard. I heard Jimmy Hendrix play live, mm -hmm. not mixed, not off a of board, just a yeah. uh, uh, plug it in and play it. Yeah. And what's interesting is as a guitar, lead guitar player is. You have to know your scales and know what key you're in. Right. Because it was so easy when I didn't know how to read music. I would always fall out of key when I'm doing my solos. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to memorize a little spot on the fretboard where I'm going to stay safe. You know, I'm not going to go no further than this, no, because if I go up here, I'm going to get lost and be hitting wrong notes. I, don't, I think that's why he did a lot of them riffs. Man, you go off on the riff. He go off on the, on the wonderful riffs the way he used to do. You know, he go off on those riffs. Who can tell the difference? It just sounds wonderful. Yeah. Okay, as we discuss this uh, topic of music, I wanted to kind of interject and just put this in there because it's very important. Black people are very receiving, very warm, and very inviting, and that's wonderful. And i give you a good example. Um, and I got nothing against these artists. They're actually very talented people, but, you know, JT, John B., Alan Thicke's son, these guys can sing their tails off. They're very talented, and as you can, as you notice, their gear, their music is geared towards R&B, black music. And we accept them. We buy their records, we go to their concerts, and nothing again, I stress nothing wrong with that, but here's my issue. It's 2013. Where are the black rock bands? Matter of fact, where are the black bands now? You know, and here's the argument that people throw at me when I say this. Well, black people don't want to do rock. That's nonsense. There are a lot of talented black bands out there, but they're not getting record contracts. You know, we can't get a piece of their money. And here it is, 2013. But, you know, the M&Ms can come on board and, and do our music and make millions, but we can't do rock. Prince opened up for the Rolling Stones in the late 70s. They threw rocks at him. And as you know, Prince can rock with the best of them. Yeah. And what most of us didn't realize the majority of Prince's early albums, he had a, he had at least one rock song on each of them. The first album, Just For You, he had uh, Just As Long As We're Together. The, the second one, uh, the, I guess it was a self-entitled one where he was on the, uh, riding on the horse naked, Bambi, which is one of the funkiest rock tunes or the rockiest rock tunes I've ever heard. And that was the best guitar solo to me personally that I've ever heard him do. And I tried to emulate it on YouTube and I did a pretty decent job. You know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean... Well, R&B is like the white folks in the 1860s, uh, the plantation owners. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the mass don't want to give up its power. So. And we should demand it. Right. It's like <laughs> we just accept stuff. You and it's like, you know, I'm not accepting that. And I'm I've not met black women that didn't mention R, some R-B. I, I, I've never heard of them. What are you, are you black? Well, you, well obviously I am. 
Well, well I, I like uh, uh, rock and roll, jazz, and classical music. Right. I like all types. I you mean, know, I'm not too much into R and B. When I was a kid, well, I, I find good in every form of music. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, but I do lean more towards certain musics than others. Yeah. But you know, it's just well, sad that here it is, 2013. Well, there are no black rock bands, R and B, rock. Rock, yeah. You know, the early stages yeah. of rock. Little Richard, you know, he's screaming and people not listening that they stole from me, and they actually they stole from him. Yeah, they stole from. He yeah. said that when the Beatles came to to the United States, they would they were his shadow. They were looking for him. And yeah. Shortly after them hanging out with with Little Richard, they started that hitting that high note. Yeah. Ooh, and they weren't doing that until they met Little Richard and studied him. Yeah. Oh, it was like uh. uh American Idol, and these young people, well, I'm going to sing a song by so-and-so and so, some little rock, uh, uh, in, in fam famous little people now mm -hmm. of their era, and it was music from the 60s or the 50s, and they saying this musician that was born uh, uh, 20 years ago, this is the music that they wrote. Mm -hmm. I'm going, no, that's not so-and-so. This music was sung by so-and-so. Oh. You understand what I'm saying? Well, we got to address that, because what Joe is talking about is sampling. and. Uh, I, one of my very first YouTube videos was I did a tutorial on how to play Footsteps in the Dark. Because mm -hmm. that's why I initially started, you know, started initially doing that. You know, that was my purpose on YouTube, was to bridge the gap of where are the black guys that are going to teach the young black guys how to play these kind of songs because it's hard to find sheet music for this music. Mm -hmm. So that's where I came in and said I'm going to, you know, give my tr contribution. Man, I forgot about sheet music. And uh, I, got, I had a guy give a comment, because I've gotten a lot of good positive comments, nothing but positive comments on that video. And one guy said, I'm really surprised you didn't make up an Ice Cube reference. I'm like, why? Ice Cube didn't write this. Ice Cube stole it. You know, yeah. there's a difference between I sit down with three other guys and write an original composition versus I come along after they done it and steal a little piece of it and put it in my song and call it my song. No, that's not your song. That's the original, comp the people that composed it. Right, the people you know? composed it. And uh, we went back and forth with this conversation. I was like, look, sir, no disrespect. This is about the IG brothers and how to play their song. This ain't got nothing to do with Ice Cube. So we're done here with this conversation. There's some people that honestly believe that they made stuff when they stole it. Right. I'll give you another quick example and then I'll let you take it. Coolio, you know, the, the rapper with the wild hair. Yeah. He stole, or should I say, he used uh, Stevie Wonder's Paradise. Uh, How could he get away with that? Paradise. Oh. And, uh, well, sometimes they just straight out take it and hope they don't get sold. And sometimes they go through the normal channels of getting the, the license and rights. So, uh, Fool's Paradise, I believe, the original okay. Stevie Wonder song. He used that in his song, Gangsta's Paradise. Then Coolio, I mean, then uh, Will Al Yankovic came around and did a, a parody of it, Amish Paradise. And Coolio got upset. He's like, you stealing my song? I'm like, no one's stealing your song because it's not your song. You stole it first. So it's like, it's amazing that people believe that they are the original creators of the stuff they stole. Uh, they're crazy. Here is my thing, you know, and I use Ice Cube as an example. When Ice Cube used that song, mm -hmm. he was already at that point a certified millionaire. Yeah. He, he was a rich guy. He was a rich guy. Here is my thing. Instead of stealing someone else's song or pieces of it, you are a rich man. Why don't you go pay a young struggling musician and buy his original music? <coughs> and not steal someone else's and actually help someone else get their start and still is still in established music. That's different when you a guy living in the basement and you trying to get your break. Yeah, you might snip it some old James Brown groove, but mm -hmm. when you are a millionaire and you're doing this, that money that you, well actually you're not paying these people until they sue you or you uh, buy the rights. <coughs> Most of them don't buy the rights. No. They just wish or hope they don't get sued. I can't understand uh, how little your ego got to be to, stick, to steal some music that you know is 25 or 30 years old. Well, anybody going to know, they, you know, they're old. 
Where's your ego at, 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 to be a musician? Most, I guess most of these people aren't musicians because they're thinking they do on the board. Right. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because initially it started off with these guys just literally stealing bars of music. Yeah. And when you hear their son, you can tell what son yeah. is stole. Then they start getting sued. Then they start calling themselves being slick. We're going to take snippets of these little bits of songs and find the op more obscure or the most obscure record that most people ain't heard and use that. They've hired people and got some software music software that they can detect and determine where that song came from. Mm -hmm. You know, so as slick as these other guys try to get, the, the, the industry is look, trying to be a little more slicker. Okay, well this will conclude this topic and this uh, episode of Tell It Like It Is. And my name is Morris Mann and my co-host. I'm Joseph Spencer. And until next time, keep thinking. Mm -hmm.